Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're going to be going over a standard steam turbine aqua tuner setup. This is your standard build that when you're playing with the aqua tuner slash steam turbine, this is the most popular design that works in a lot of cases. And the idea is that the steam turbine is here to delete the heat that's generated from the aqua tuner as your aqua tuner chills your liquids in your pipeline so that you could transfer that cold thermal energy elsewhere of course regardless of what you're choosing to cool down typically your designs are always going to look about the same like this and this is the standard aqua tuner steam turbine setup for the most part you're going to want a liquid log going into here ideally you're going to want a liquid that does not become a gas while the energy in the box is around 125 or even higher so in that case you're really just left with crude oil now, of course, you don't need to use crude oil with this as long as you make a vacuum setup right here with the doors as if you actually have this door close on automation like so and then you open it up again while keeping this door locked. What happens is, is that you're going to create a vacuum. That vacuum is going to prevent any heat from transferring. So you don't actually need to have crude oil here if you do the lock like this. Now, of course, the design is as follows. Steam turbines are a 3x5 tile building that has the ports stick out through the bottom. So technically, in that case, it's kind of a 5x4. Now, for the most part, this is your stereotypical build that you're looking for. You're just going to be fitting one aqua tuner at the bottom, steam turbine up top, just wide enough to make a perfect rectangle where you have all of the spokes from the steam turbine exposed. Now... I have a layer of water here to help out with the cooling. I do recommend this setup as the water is very strong for this setup and running the radiant pipeline on its way back. And this allows you to actually maintain the steam turbine as a percentage of the heat is transported to the steam turbine in and of itself. So you will need to be cooling down your steam turbine as this will generate heat. Now, of course, in most cases, having your aqua tuner loop back at the end to the steam turbine is all you need. Now, at the bottom right here, what you're going to want to set up for the aqua tuner is a thermal check. This allows you to maintain temperature and not have your aqua tuner running constantly, which will freeze the liquids in your pipes. And how it works is you have to run your pipeline immediately before the input as you see here so right before you go into your input you have to have a thermal sensor our sensor is set to above 24 and the automation is straightforward directly into the aqua tuner now with this setup you also need an overflow mechanism meaning that when your aqua tuner is disabled you still need a way from your intake line right here to go into the uh, start of your loop which is coming from the uh, output pipe now, when your aqua tuner is disabled, that means that your liquid that's on the tile, it's actually cold enough and it does not need to be chilled again. In this case, you just want the liquid to continue over and this is the overflow setup that I would recommend. The takeaway from this is that you want to have your bridge always in the tile. You will never want your bridge jumping across like so regardless. This is bad. You're either going to have your bridge inside or inside the insulated tiles. Inside the box, inside the insulated tiles. Anything else is going to hurt you. And you're not going to want to know why. That will be explained in another video. It's a weird bug slash glitch that happens. But this is the overflow setup that you would need. And then the rest of the pipelines don't matter. It's just going to go out to cool out the area of your choosing. Now, when you're making the areas, you have to vacuum up the steam box as any other other gases will get in the way and not allow your steam turbine to work. If you ever bring up your gas overlay and you have another gas in here, it's very likely that the gas is going to stay up top and then not allow your steam to get cooled down or sucked in by the steam turbine, meaning that this will never work and you're just going to break your own buildings inside. So it's very important to have a vacuum inside. Now for the liquids, I usually go with two full bottles of water, which ends up being 400 kilograms per tile. 
and then at the bottom I just have one bottle of crude oil. This allows it so that I always have a liquid at the bottom and so that I have fewer spaces of steam allowing to be more steam per tile. The more steam per tile means the harder it's going to be for the aqua tuner to overheat the steam and cause issues for my steam turbine. A lot of times having a lot of water mass is very beneficial for you as it allows for the steam to not spike up as high. The more water you have, the harder it is it's going to be to increase the temperature of said water. Now after you set that up, you have the spilled water here, you have the radiant piping on top of that, you have your overflow set up, you have your thermal sensor with the automation, and you have your liquids in with the vacuum. What you're going to want to do is on your aqua tuner line, you're going to want to fill up your pipeline. Wherever it goes, as you can see right here, my pipeline is no longer moving. Ideally, you want every bubble filled and then after you get into a situation like this, you're going to want to remove one bubble. So we're going to do just that with the piping. So we're going to take this and remove exactly one bubble so that we could continue rotating the water. One of my duplicates remove exactly one bubble in which we will remove the plumbing. And as you could see, we should start getting some movement. Now, if you have a situation like me where it's not moving constantly, you're better off moving out one more bubble and we should have continuous motion like this. This is the goal. Once you get to this point, you're actually going to be able to start kicking on your aqua tuner. Right now, we don't have it attached to power, but the moment that's done, that's all you need. And the last thing is the output port for the water coming back in. I have mine set up as so directly into the uh, crude oil so that the water immediately becomes steam. Now with that, all we got to do is kick it on. Now you could see here, there's nothing in yet, but the temperature of the liquids and the aqua tuner is going to be slowly rising as we chill our liquid to the correct temperature. The moment the aqua tuner gets hot enough, we're going to generate steam. Depending on what you need to do, you could change up the liquid medium. Just know that water is typically the most efficient. And there it is. The water is starting to become steam because of the heat. And once we get to 125 temperature per tile, you're going to see that the steam turbine is going to kick on. And what it's going to do, it's going to release 95 degree water on the output. And what that does is brings it down to here and start cooling. Because the steam that it eats is at 125 minimum and the output water is at 95, a lot of that heat energy is actually deleted by the steam turbine, which is why these two make a great couple. And as you can see right here, there is no heat transfer in the vacuum, which means that my crude oil here didn't have to be crude oil. There we go. We got the steam turbine kicking on and the 95 C water right here is going to cool down the aqua tuner as this is actually lower than the temperature of the building itself. So that's how this cools down the aqua tuner, generates power so that it could convert that heat into something and how we maintain this. So as long as you have power, you're going to be able to chill out the system and there is never going to be a case where your aqua tuner is going to be able to provide enough energy thermally from the steam turbine since the steam turbine caps off at 850 watts and the aqua tuner is at 1200 required for that to run. Even if you were to get two steam turbines, it will never be enough with one aqua tuner to be power positive. That's going to require some more engineering and some other outside forces to maintain that. But otherwise, this is the standard steam turbine aqua tuner setup for when you want to cool down areas with the liquid. And this is the typical setup that you would have to maintain it so that you could always be running as long as you have power. Guys, one of the caveats for this build is that you need to have steel for your aqua tuner. And of course, the steam turbine also requires plastic. So this build does require a bit of more advanced resource selection as you do need steel and plastic. Now, of course, if you guys have any questions about the builder design, this is the standard design, not anything advanced. Please leave a comment down below. And of course, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.